Hey guys, we are back with another video. Today we have roller coasters at La Ronde Ranked. So if you've ever been or heard of La Ronde, it is a Six Flags amusement park at, in Montreal, Canada. It is not the best park, but there are a couple good rides. So first we're going to get through some honorable mentions. These are coasters that are not currently at the park. So Super Manege, it is the now defunct Vacoma Corkscrew Coaster. It was just taken out this year, but I did get to ride on it before it got taken out. Um, it is just a old Vacoma 2 inversion model, the double corkscrew, and then it kind of just wanders around the course in a bunch of turns. There's a helix at the end, nothing too special about it. It's not a big deal that it got taken out. So next we have Vipel, the new for 2020 Intamin Zaxpin. Now this was previously Green Lantern at Magic Mountain. It is not opened at La Ronde yet and it was hated at Magic Mountain. That is actually because they got new trains because of a California bylaw. And previously when they had the old lighter trains, this ride was actually pretty decent. So hopefully when they get it running up at La Ronde, they can get the old trains back and if they get those old trains back, I think this could be a decent ride. So once I get out there, I'll tell you what I think about it. So at number eight, we have La Marche du Mille Pattes. This is a old, old uh, aerodynamics mine train, uh, 1967 to be exact. That's an old ride. Um, this is listed as a mine train, but this is the smallest mine train I've ever seen. It's pretty much just a kitty coaster. Um, this is actually the only ride at the park I did not get on just because um, You had to ride it with a child and I was too tall But just from the POV it just seems like a decent kids ride obviously there is no Speed or anything, but um, it does look all right it, it doesn't look too clunky and there is a decent bit of theme you saw it just go through a tunnel it hugs the terrain, which is also pretty cool, especially for a kid's coaster. And yeah, it's it's an alright for a kid's coaster. So, at number 7, we have Dragon. Dragon is a 1994 Intamin family coaster. Um, what it is, it's pretty much just a slow-moving helix a, in a big dark box with some decent beaming. This was a decent family coaster. Um, again, just putting this out here, the POVs, they might not all be the best quality because there are no official La Ronde POVs. So there might be a couple ones like this, especially indoor coasters, you might be able to not see everything. But thank you for everyone I got the POVs from. I credited all the channels in the, chan in the description, so make sure to check some of those out. So yeah, as you can see, you head up that spiral lift and then you head back down into the coaster. It is just a simple family coaster. Um, I really like the theming inside of it. It adds to the excitement. Obviously the dark, like any dark coaster, will make you feel like you're going faster. But it wraps up pretty quickly after doing a couple helixes in the dark and comes back out into the light and back into the station. So number seven or number six, we have Tobalgan Nordique. This is the Zamperla Wild Mouse. Um, I got on this once and I wasn't a huge fan. Obviously, it's a Wild Mouse to begin with, so there's nothing too crazy about it. But um, also compared to the other Wild Mouse I've been on, which is the Fly Canada's Wonderland, I didn't even like it as much as this. I think the mock rides wild mouses are a lot better than the Zamperlas. The Zamperla was kind of rougher, it didn't have that drop at the beginning, and it just wasn't as good. But overall, it's a wild mouse, you can't really expect too much from it, so it was a decent ride for the families, nothing too horrible. So at number 5, we have Boomerang. Um, this is the Vacoma Boomerang at the park, if her, I'm sure a lot of you have been on one of these. It's a standard boomerang, they're, it's, they're not my favorite coaster, but it wasn't terribly rough. Um, it was just a normal boomerang. I think um, it was, if I were to compare it to the other ones I've been on at Canada's Wonderland, 
it was pretty much right about there. Boomerangs are never the roughest coaster, but and I think this one just kind of fits in with the rest. So if you want the credit, by all means ride it, but otherwise there's nothing too special about it. It still has that over the shoulder restraint, so there might be a bit of headbanging. So at number 4 we have Adnor Latak. This is the Puma SLC at La Ronde. Um, it has a really weird history. It was actually was built first at Astro World, but then closed with the park. It was in storage for five years, and then finally opened at La Ronde in 2010. This makes no sense to me because La Ronde already had a Batman clone, so I don't know why they got another invert. And to get a inferior invert to B&M inverts, I don't know why, but that's successful. But anyways, to get into the ride, it's it's pretty good honestly, um, especially compared to Flight Deck. It is not as bumpy, um, not as much headbanging, and it is a decent ride, especially for an SLC. Uh, so yeah, that's why I ranked it ahead of Boomerang. So at number three, we have Monstro. This is the old 1985 dueling wooden coaster. Um, I believe only the right side is working at the moment, so I only got one of the credits, I only wrote the right side. And this is another just mediocre ride at the Ronde. There's a lot of these mediocre rides. Um, it wasn't too rough or anything, it just didn't do a whole lot. There was fun, there was one fun airtime moment, I think that's coming up right here. There's a double down, that was a nice pop of uh, airtime, but the rest of it kind of just, like even over here, just neanders through the course. It's really just kind of a boring ride. Um, I think this ride would be awesome with an RMC conversion. It's a super tall ride with a huge wooden structure if you see it. Um, there's so much that RMC could do with this. But I just don't think that Six Flags wants to invest anything in this park, which is a real shame because I think this could be a elite top tier RMC. Uh, but just judging by the last two um, additions, which are both relocations to Laurent, I don't think Six Flags wants to invest in this park. So at number two, we have Vampire. This is the 2002 BNM invert. Um, this was actually my first BNM invert that I ever rode, and I just fell in love. They are such awesome rides, um, especially the Batman clones. I know they're super overused, and they're at eight Six Flags parks, but for your first time riding one, they're awesome. They're packed with inversions. The five inversions are all amazing. Um, they're non-stop. The only part that lets up is this turnaround. You, you almost need that break just because it's a super compact ride and all the inversions are super intense back to back and it's all around just a great ride. Uh, this was again the first B&M invert I rode and I really want one at my home park. It was awesome. So at number one we have Goliath, the 2006 B&M Hyper Coaster. Uh, so this coaster, it is technically not a hyper coaster. It is 170 feet tall, so is it, it is on the shorter side. However, I still consider it a hyper just because obviously it has that standard hyper coaster um, layout. Just the out and back with a lot of airtime hills. So what I thought about this coaster, obviously the stats are not in its favor, it being pretty short. But for the stats that it has, it has some pretty good airtime. Um, especially over those hills, they're a lot smaller than a usual B&M hyper, but they go over them pretty quick. Uh, so I actually thought it had some pretty good airtime. It's not as good as Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland. However, it is a solid coaster, as many B&M hypers are. Um, just coming up right here, just before the break run, there's a little dip, and the first time riding that, that was really cool for me. I just forgot about it right here, and that just little pop of airtime was super fun. So, yeah, uh, that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you everybody for watching, hope you guys enjoyed, um, 
please hit that subscribe button it means a lot and so you don't miss out on new content just like this thanks for watching bye bye